Hello guys and gals, and welcome back for another episode of Indie Impressions. My name is Nick, and today we're checking out something called Simian Interface. It's a, like, a two-dimensional, cerebral puzzle game with a lot of very beautiful colors, and, uh, some really interesting pulse-pounding music, and just a very cool, simple premise. Uh, you know, occasionally on the show, I just like to play a game that is just sort of simple, accessible, and just makes me laugh a little bit, or smile, and I think this definitely fits the bill for this particular request. So let's have a look at it. I think you guys are going to like it. And there are our options. Uh, nothing really worth talking about. But we'll start up mod A and get accustomed to what we're going to be doing. As you can see, I move my mouse around. These little tiles in the background are actually moving with respect to the way that I move my mouse. So we'll proceed. And here is the entirety of what I believe the game comes to be. We take the solid square and the hollow square, and you match them up, and you listen to some very nice, soothing electronica in the background. The goal gets more and more complex as we go. We realize, hey, there's two hollow squares here, how are we supposed to make that fit? Well, if you drag it far enough, you'll realize there's actually two to fill it in with. Uh, then we start to get some more complex situations like this, where I think we just have to line the... yeah, all of them just line up. And, oh, there we go. So what we're really doing here is we're just playing with, uh, like, a depth of field effect, essentially, where we've got a foreground and a background, and we're just trying to figure out, since there's no point of reference, how we need to shift those two paradigms so they all line up. Uh, and it looks fairly simple the way I'm doing it, but it's kind of cool how quickly it can act like an optical illusion, and you might not know exactly what you're going to do. Uh, so I did actually play through this first little module here before, just to uh, set up the test recording stuff. And I love that you get a little banana at the end that's adorable. Because uh, we are interfacing with our simian minds right now. And let's check out mod B. This is new to me here. Ah, the music is even better. I love it. We've got an uh, errant subroutine QM30WX. That's probably pretty bad. Alright, so it looks like Thomas is alone or something, but it's not. We've got two different rotating axes here, so we need to go left and right, and up and down, and it should actually work out just fine. Uh, thankfully, the margin for error is... I don't want to say it's generous, but it's definitely not too bad either. I love how the, the puzzles sort of come together. Oh, this is easy. This is like what I do in Photoshop every day. And each puzzle actually looks like a lot of work for the developer to figure out how to make a new scale for the player to play with. Uh, because if you've noticed, they don't all follow the exact same rules. There are some slight modifications, and then the backgrounds also have some pretty cool little details going on in them as well. Uh, so I don't know what I'm supposed to... Oh, focus loss. So we can't go outside of the screen, obviously. That's probably bad. Uh, eventually I should be able to line these two... It's like a Venn diagram, I guess. We need to get these two things to converge. Oh, there we go. I thought maybe I had to match all of them up, but if... Whoa, what was that? That looks like a freaking kaleidoscope. It's quite pretty, actually. Uh, you can make a lovely pattern. There we go. I guess that was the goal, was to make the pattern. That was actually not that bad. Do we get another banana? Yeah, dopamine time. Mmm. Bananas are good. I'm a fan. Alright, so it is a bit on the easy side, and I, I guess I kind of regret spoiling most of the puzzles for you, but at the same time, it's just really cool to go through. And you're not going to remember how to solve them. I mean, part of this is to be able to move your mouse around and figure out how this all fits together. So it's not really too big of a deal that you're watching me do it in a way, because you'll want to go and try this for yourself, especially since it's free. Alright, so we've got some sort of a twist here, because that's not taken. Uh, oh, there we go. Okay, we've got opacity now as another element, and I believe that's going to combine to make white. Oh, that's so cool, it's like Fez or something. Oh, now we're actually playing with color theory on top of it, which makes this even more exciting. It's still a bit on the easy side, but it's- oh, that's beautiful. I so get into stuff like this. I don't know why red was the solution there, but whatever. Uh, there we go, and then those on the bottom will all fill in. Oh, what was that? Was that a cat? It might have just been a glitch, but it looked like a cat for a split second. Uh, I believe all these lines should line up in one spot. I'm not sure where that spot is, though. 
So I guess it's sort of like a point-and-click adventure where, you know, you have to, like, point around and look for some rather obtuse solutions at times. But if I reach the right point here, these all these lines should line up into one grid, as far as I can tell. I believe the green and the dark blue need to definitely line up. There we go, that's it. I love this game, it just keeps getting better. I hope... Oh, there, it was a cat! I knew it. It was a subliminal cat, I only saw it for a split second. This game might be quite short, and if that's the case, then that's alright. Loading something different. Meow <laughs> mode engaged. I like it, he's got a nice vest. Alright, now we're calibrating the neutronal something or other. And what's gonna happen next? Firmware... Ah, oh, there's still errors. Alright. Kitty's up on top. He doesn't seem to be too concerned with what's going on, though. Uh, so we're in meow mode. I guess we'll just check out... our C drive here. Oh boy, what's this? Oh, okay. I thought this was a puzzle already. No, we're still just getting into the puzzle. Oh, this is interesting. Alright, so these should frame... Yep, that's what I thought. They'd frame around it and fill it in. If anything, even if this isn't a particularly difficult puzzle game, it's a really cool little interactive experience, uh, which you could frame perhaps more like a music video. Oh, that looks like a sweet logo or something, or an introduction. Oh, we've got a Mondrian level. I love it. Um, how am I gonna... I need to get all the blocks to sit in their respective spots. Thought I was onto something over here. I mean, it's sort of bound to be somewhat easy just by virtue of the puzzles being solvable just by moving your mouse cursor around, so you're eventually going to solve them. There's not really too much to worry about there, although this one's taking me longer than I expected. I think I just want to get that yellow box in the... no? doesn't want to do that either. I don't think there's any other way to do it other than somewhere up here, right? Oh, there we go. I just had to line them. Okay. That wasn't really that bad. Uh, what am I doing here? Diagonals. There we go. So it's more about making a pattern, really, than just making a white box, which I kind of like that the rules changed a little bit there, or that at least they introduced them to us a little bit slowly. I'm not sure I like the plaid levels very much, but I'll live. Uh, so now that I know the graph paper level and how that worked, I should be able to manipulate this around... You'd think fairly skillfully, but yet not. You don't want to go near the edges, obviously that's going to disconnect you from the experience. Sort of like in Assassin's Creed, you know, we're having a moment. We've desynchronized, so to speak. Plaid level! I like how the music also gets fainter as you go towards the edges, that's a pretty nice effect. Um, why am I not seeing the solution here? This is not that bad. Alright, so make these as small as possible, right? And then we should just go up. That's not right, though. I'm not sure what I need to overlap with what, but I'm not in the right place to be doing it, apparently. But, uh, you know, huge props to the developer for making this in such a way that even such a simple concept as just moving your mouse cursor around a screen is this engaging and also still semi-challenging in a way. I mean, I can't say that this is actually challenging because, like I said, you could solve all the puzzles eventually just by moving the mouse around, but... At the same time, it rewards you for your pattern recognition, which is something that I definitely appreciate. Um, wow, I can't believe this is so hard. What am I doing wrong here? Do I need to make the dark blue equal width? No. And make it disappear completely? That doesn't really help either. I can make them all uniform. That's probably what I'm supposed to be doing, actually. This should... there we go. I deserve a big reward. Oh, giant banana! Love it. Alright, well that was Meow Mode. I think that's probably... is that still not the end? Wow. I keep being surprised. I keep expecting it to end, and then it just goes a little further. 
Oh boy, this looks in interesting. Ah, that one's kind of easy though. Oh, that's pretty. That's really pretty. I love the colors in this. Oh, that's so nice. I'm not even trying to solve it. I'm just playing with it because it looks so nice. There we go. I have a like a really big thing for like color transparencies and like playing with that kind of stuff. I mean, you probably know that already. This one's super easy. I mean, if you're just going to give me the pixels. Now, essentially, we're just playing, but that's okay. No reason the developer can't have a little fun too, right? Oh, this is so cool. I love that the way that they move is so different every time. You don't really know what to expect. I mean, I know that I'm trying to make two boxes right now, but I really like just seeing them interact with each other. Alright, we've got citrus level here. Uh, I believe we're supposed to make a pattern of all diamonds. Line them up. No? There we go. So close you can taste it. What is there, one more after this, maybe? Except- oh my god, that's a lot of bananas. Alright, we'll just get all the bananas. I'm gonna be very happy. I feel like Donkey Kong... Dude filled his whole house up with bananas. He was really obsessed with them. He had to go on a quest to get more. And I guess we've made it to the server, so I guess the monkey is now hacking back. <laughs> to get back at whoever's forcing him to take all these tests. And I guess the monkey is me. Almost time for a vacation, all right. It always feels like a little bit of a cop-out when the answer is just to like move the cursor to the center of the screen. I don't like when that happens. Um, oh, turn. Strange perspective sometimes, I really like that too. I can't quite understand which way is in and out and up and down. Oh, was that? I think I see it. No? I thought it was going to be like that with the two gaps, but I am mistaken. Can't be like that. I gotta turn it until we're in the right position to flip it again. Oh, that's it. There we go. Okay, now we're doing some actual, like, serious per perspective stuff, because I can actually make out a form to this shape. And I just need to rotate it into the right position so it's shaped like a lowercase h, and there it is. Uh, what do we have this? Oh, we've got a whole bunch of random tiles, like sprites, uh, one-sided sprites or something. And we need to make two columns out of them. Thought I almost had it for a second. Nope. Uh, let's go... Like that, and maybe up. There we go. Yeah, the top tiles would disappear because they go out of the perspective. And this one's fairly easy. There we go. Oh, what's this? Oh, it's changing. It's like antechamber. Trying to mess with me. I don't understand. What am I supposed to do here? All right, we've got another box down there. Oh. <laughs> I guess that was actually simpler than I thought. So, pink squared to the pink square, and yellow to the yellow. And left, there we go. Wow, okay, I guess it's... We've, uh, <laughs> finished the tests or something, and now our monkey is so smart, he is transcended. Oh, now we're doing a three-dimensional Rubik's Cube. Oh, that's cool looking. Uh, so we need to spin these so the proper colors all line up to bounce off of each other and create white. Hopefully it shouldn't be too hard. Although, there we go. Seemed harder than I thought for a moment. So if I want to recap here just for a moment, if you guys can't tell, I'm enthusiastic about this game. Definitely recommend that you check it out. Uh, just the sense of art style to it is quite beautiful, and the the fact that it's interactive on top of it, and challenging in some respects, is like huge, huge props to the developer. I really like this a lot. Everything just keeps morphing and changing, and it, it looks like so much work went into this. I can't even really tell how to make a square out of that. I thought I saw it for a second, but everything is sort of bending and changing. You'd think it would just be to converge on the center. Well, maybe that is what it was. I must have just gone by it too fast. You brilliant little creature. User perm permissions erased, new user login, super admin. Ready to end this? Do not delete biospin. Alright, I won't. But I will get 
another freaking banana because I love those. You get a peanut butter and banana sandwich at the end. Is this the credits? Did I win? I guess I should probably move my mouse cursor off the screen, right? <laughs> Thank you, organism. Alright, well that looks like that was the end. A very, very cool game, Simeon Interface. Definitely recommend you guys go check this out. It is totally free, it is actually on Newgrounds. Uh, beautiful, beautiful experience. I definitely recommend it to everybody, so... I mean, I can't really see a downside to it unless you're just not into this style of game. Uh, in which case, that's totally fine. I'm sure there'll be other ones along the way for you as well. Uh, so, to all of you watching, thank you so much for sticking around, and I hope you go check this one out. Links will be right in the description, as they always are. Uh, and feel free to visit my website, which is indie-impressions.com, to browse all the videos I've covered in this entire series now. Uh, we're getting close to, like, 330 videos. We're going to be coming up on the year mark very soon. I'm very excited by it all. And uh, the, the whole thing has just been absolutely wonderful. So... Uh, aside from the website, though, facebook.com slash indieimpressions. If you'd like to leave a like over there, it helps me out, and then you get updated on every day's new video delivered into your Facebook stream. And I also do the occasional news update or contest through there as well, so you might end up finding a game giveaway or something if you want to go like that page. But that is entirely up to you. Uh, lastly, though, if you're a developer and you want to possibly get your game covered on the show, the quickest way to reach me is at RockleySmile on Twitter. Uh, by the way, the, uh, all the links for social media stuff will be right in the description as well, so feel free to go clicking around if you missed anything I said. Uh, and that will be uh, pretty much it. So I also have a contact form on the website too in case you want to email me directly. That is also fine. So I hope to hear from lots of you, and I hope you enjoy the game, and I will talk to you again tomorrow for another awesome indie game. Have a nice night. Later.